What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is tackle three different problems that you absolutely need to know and understand if you are looking to get that A. Now, I have no idea what's gonna be on a test or a quiz or even on your homework, but from teaching Algebra 2 inside the classroom, I can definitely say that these problems are on the more difficult end of the spectrum are definitely going to separate those A students from everybody else. Okay, so when we look at this first example, you can see that I have, again, trinomials in both of my denominators. And again, that should bring up a big alarm saying factor, 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 right? Anytime we see quadratic trinomials, you should be thinking factoring. And again, the reason why we want to factor in these is because we want to find the least common denominator. But I don't want to just multiply my two denominators. That's a trinomial times a trinomial. That's going to be a pretty big common denominator. So let's go ahead and factor these to kind of see, is there any common factors between them that's going to make this problem a little little bit easier. On the left-hand side, basically what I'm doing is saying what two numbers multiply to give me negative eight and that are going to add to give me a negative two. What I'm thinking is four and two, right? Because the difference of them is two and they both multiply to give me a negative eight. Since my middle term is negative, that means the four has to be negative. So that's going to be an X minus a four times a X minus two. Now, once I've already factored my new denominator, I'm just going to put a line through this one just so I don't get it confused. Now, in this denominator, you can see I have 32. Now, 32 has a lot of different factors. Now, the difference here, though, is this last term is positive, whereas this one was negative. So when the last term is negative, you're looking for the difference of the two factors. When your last term is positive, you're looking for the sum of the two factors. So if I list the factors of 32 in my head, I have 32 and one, right? I have 16 and two, and I have four and eight. The only two of those factors that add to give me a 12 is going to be four and eight. However, it's a negative 12, right? So therefore I'm looking for, you know, what two numbers multiply to give me 32, but then are going to add to give me a negative 12. Well, again, that's going to be a negative four and a negative eight. And again, do those multiply to give me 32? Yes, they do. So again, just remember when the last term is positive, we're looking to add our factors. When the last term is negative, we're looking to find the difference between our factors. So this factor form is going to be an X minus four and an X plus eight. Okay, so now let's go and put a line through there and let's go and take stock of what we have. So in this denominator, I have an X minus four and X minus two. This one, I have an X minus four and an X plus eight. And yes, look at, I have a shared denominator of an X minus four. So therefore my LCD is going to contain an X minus four, but it has to contain an X minus two and it has to contain an X plus eight. To not make everything so confusing, let's just go ahead and write that out. And one thing I tell students all the time, guys, especially for you A students that are, you know, looking to get that A is you got to watch out for your mistakes. When you start having a lot of things that you need to like memorize or keep in your head, it's very helpful just to write them down. And a lot of times it's not going to be the maker difference on timing for a test. Just spend that little extra time writing things down. So therefore you can kind of keep track of everything. So here's my LCD. This is what I need to obtain for both of these fractions. So over here, I have X minus four and X minus two. I just need to multiply by an X plus eight. And again, remember, we're going to do that on the top as well as on the bottom. On the numerator though, I I have an expression here, so I'm going to also put that in parentheses. Now on this right hand side, I have the X minus four and X plus eight, but I do not have an X minus two. So again, I'm going to do a X minus two here on the top as well as on the bottom. And again, I'm going to do the same thing over here just to kind of reiterate what I just told you. You can see there's like a lot of mess that's going on right there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite everything. Now that I've obtained a common denominator, I can just write that as my denominator. And then I'll write these two expressions all up in the numerator. Now I need to expand by multiplying my binomials. Now there's a couple different ways you can do that. You could definitely use the FOIL or distributive property, right? Just multiply every term times every term, or you can use what we call the box method. Now, again, I like to use the box method to avoid making mistakes. And the way the box method basically works is you just take anytime you're multiplying two terms um, or expressions, you just go ahead and make a column and a row for each one of those terms. So in this case, I have an X minus five. And here I have an X minus two. Remember when you're finding the, like the area of a box, you just multiply length times width, right? So X times X is an X squared. X times negative five is a negative five X. X times negative two is a negative two X. And negative two times negative five is going to be a positive 10, right? And you can just see how everything is nice kind of listed. The other thing I like about the box method is that the common terms, as long as you have everything in descending order, the common terms are going to be listed here on the diagonal. But let's just go and write everything out together so you can see how it gets simplified. Now over here, I'm just going to use the FOIL. So I'm just going to do this kind of step by step as I kind of do it. So X times X is going to be a X squared. X times three is going to be a positive three X. X times eight is a positive eight X and a eight times three is going to be a positive 24. Now it's very important though. I want you to recognize what I'm doing here. I'm going to put parentheses around this product here. Now I'm actually going to write out in the simplified version because again, I have my like terms. So therefore this is going to be an X squared, let's say a minus seven X plus 10 and then all over our denominator. And the reason why this parentheses guys is so important because this is where students make their mistakes. They totally forget to put a parentheses around here. And then what they have here is just a negative X squared. Well guys, no, that is not what you're subtracting. You're not subtracting the X squared. 
you are subtracting the next squared minus 7x plus 10. So what that means is you need to distribute that negative to each and every one of those terms. Another way you can think about that is like multiplication. This is really a negative one times that whole expression. So we need to make sure we go ahead and distribute that before we simplify. And I know it's a little bit more work, but I'm actually going to rewrite this whole expression. So therefore, again, we can just take stock of what are we adding and what are we subtracting? Okay. And to make life a little bit easier, you can see I just add, combine the three X and the eight X. And you can see by multiplying everything by negative, that just changed the signs of the X squared minus seven X plus 10. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and combine my terms, right? So I have my X squared. So I can go ahead and combine those. I have my terms with a one X and then I have my constants. So now let's just go ahead and do that and write our final answer. So X squared minus X squared is just give me a zero X squared, which is, I'm not going to write that in there. 11 X plus seven X is going to be a 18 X and a 24 minus 10, right? Is going to be a positive 14. And then again, that's going to be all over my denominator. Now, one thing your teacher might say is always write your answer in simplified form. So again, if we're looking for that A, we want to be able to see, is there anything else we can simplify? Now, something sometimes we can simplify expressions in the numerator and denominator, but nothing separated in our numerator by multiplication. However, I do recognize I can factor out a two from the 18 as well as from the 14. Okay. So now it's in factored form. However, nothing divides out. Nothing is the same in the numerator and denominator. So therefore this is going to be my simplified answer. All right. Now in this next example, this is a lovely example. And the reason why it's a lovely example is because the factoring. This is definitely going to challenge students that struggle with factoring. But you can understand this is the exact same concept, right? We have a trinomial and we have a trinomial. We need to factor them. Now, before we go ahead and immediately start factoring, the first thing we always want to look into is to be able to, what can we factor out that is common between all of our terms? And in this side, you can see that these are all even numbers that are divisible by four. So I can actually factor out a four. Okay. So now you can see that we have a quadratic trinomial where my A is not going to equal one. So that's going to make things a little bit more difficult as far as the understanding of factoring. But the one thing I always like to tell students is remember all quadratic trinomials can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. So I know the two numbers that are going to multiply, give me a two X squared is going to be a two X as well as an X. But then what I need to do is be able to find the factors for negative three that I'm going to input here. Now, remember when my last term is looking to negative, I'm looking for the difference of the factors, not the difference of the factors of three, which is just going to be two, right? Three and one have a difference of two, but those numbers are going to be multiplied by this value of two. So the one thing I immediately see, if I multiply two times three, that's going to give me a six. And if my other factor is one. Well, six and one have a difference of five. Now I need this difference to be a negative five. So therefore I want to make sure I have a negative three here. And again, basically what I'm trying to do is just deconstruct foil, right? I'm undoing the destroyed property. So what do I need to multiply by negative three to get negative three? Well, that's just going to be a positive one. A lot of times when I kind of do this, sometimes I'll make mistakes in my head. Sometimes I won't, but I think it's always helpful to just kind of like double check your work. Two X times X is two X squared. Good. One times negative three is negative three. Good. Do these middle terms add to give me a negative five X. One times X is X and two X times negative three is going to be a negative six X. So again, practice really kind of makes perfect in this. So now let's go and do the next one. And again, I'm just going to cross out all of these denominators here because this is going to be my final denominator we're going to work with. All right. So now looking at this next example, um, again, we're going to want to do the same thing. These are not all even like the last example, but they all are divisible by three. So I'll, first thing I'll do is go ahead and factor out a three. Okay. And now again, you can see that I have another quadratic where my A is not equal to one. However, my last term is going to be positive. So now I'm looking to add my factors that are also going to be multiplied by a two, right? Because again, the product of two binomials could be a two X and an X. Now, again, not both of my factors can be multiplied by two. Only one of them is going to be multiplied by two. So we got to think about our factors of four. Now factors of four, we have four and one and two and two. However, I need to kind of get these to add up to a nine. And I recognize if I multiply two times a four, right? A positive four, that's going to give me eight and four times what gives me four. Well, that's again, going to be a positive one. Now, again, let's just double check this two X times X is two X squared. Yes. One times four is four. Yes. One times X is X and two X times four is going to be eight X, right? These two add up to a nine X we're good to go. So now again, I'm going to put lines through these denominators, right? Because here's what we're working with. Now, again, this might be a little confusing and I totally get it. So therefore let's just go ahead and quickly rewrite this to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Awesome. Now we have everything a little bit cleaned up, right? Because we don't want to make those simple mistakes. We're looking for the A. So let's go and see what they have in common. So they both have a two X plus one in common, right? But on this left-hand side, um, we don't have the X plus four and we don't have the three. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by a three and an X plus four. And on the right-hand side, you can see we have have a X plus four. We have a two X plus one and a three, but we do not have a four and we do not have a X minus three. So again, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by a four and X minus three. Okay. So now let's just go ahead and double check, make sure we have our denominators are both the same for both of them, right? Now we do have some little bit of work we have to do in the numerator, but that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and apply distributive property here and then just rewrite our numerator one last time before we finally simplify. So a couple things that I did just kind of do just to kind of speed things up. I already multiplied the four times four, right? Which is 16. So 16 is 
times X was 16 X and then 16 times negative three was a negative 48. The other thing I also did for my common denominator was I just multiplied the four times the three, right? Those are both numbers. So then I just left that here as the 12. Now, the only thing else we need to do up here is just going to combine my three X and my 16 X, which is going to be a nine X and then the 12 minus a 48, which is going to be a negative 36. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing else we can really simplify here. And that is going to be our final answer. Unless again, you can see that we have not two, but three expressions that we're trying to add. The good news, even though this problem is going to confuse a lot of other students, it's not going to confuse you because the process is exactly the same, right? If I say two plus three, and then I say two plus three plus five, what are we doing? We're doing the same thing. Just focus on adding two of them first. Now, before we get into any adding or subtracting, we do need to make sure we have common denominators. And the unfortunate thing is we have three different denominators. But again, don't just multiply everything out because that would be a really, really big common denominator, which we don't want to work with, right? We want to work with the most simplified common denominator to get the most simplified expression. So the one thing that stands out to me is that y squared minus 3y plus 2. Why does it stand out to me? Because it's a quadratic trinomial, right? And I'm thinking factoring factoring, factoring. Let's go and take a look at what two numbers multiply to give me two, but are going to add to give me a negative three. Well, that's hopefully rather simple compared to the last problem we just did. That's going to be a y minus two times a y minus one. And what do you know? That's the same as over here. And that's the same as over here. So this problem actually isn't that bad. It looks a little bit more confusing than it really is. So all I need to do to obtain my least common denominator, which is again, is a y minus two times y minus one is just to go ahead and multiply this expression by a y minus two over a y minus two this expression by y minus one over y minus one. And this expression thankfully already has my least common denominator. So there's nothing I need to do to it. All right. Now, whenever I do this on a sheet of paper, it always kind of looks a little messy. So let's just go ahead and rewrite everything. Now, again, my common denominator is y minus two minus y minus one. So when I write my big fraction bar, all I'm simply going to do is just include that in the denominator y minus two times a y minus one. But for my numerator, I need to include this product this product, and then plus y. So now we can just go and see we need to multiply this out. Now I've already showed you the box method. I already showed you FOIL. So one of the next things we can do is hopefully if you kind of don't like to, so hopefully if you're not very prone to making some mistakes, you can start kind of multiplying these in your head. And basically again, all I'm simply doing here is multiply my first two terms, right? It's going to give me a y squared. I'm multiplying my last two terms, right? Which in this case is going to give me negative two. And then what I'm multiplying is my inner and my outer, and then I'm adding them in my head. So negative two times y is a negative two y plus a y times one, which is y. So therefore that's just going to give me a negative y. And then I'm going to add that here. So this is going to be y times y is a y squared. Two times one is going to be a positive two. And then a two y plus a y times one. So that's going to be a three y. And then we have this extra y over here. So again, that's going to be all over my common denominator. And now we just need to go ahead and combine our like terms. So we have y squared plus y squared, right? We have a negative y plus a positive y, and we have a negative two plus a positive two. Oh, and don't forget this three Y almost made a mistake there. So that's why I like using those little lines because I want to make sure every single term has a place value that we can keep kind of track of Y squared plus Y squared. So that's going to give me a two Y squared. So the negative Y's are going to add to zero. So we're going to have a plus a three Y and then negative two plus two is going to give me a zero. So again, this is going to be all over a Y minus two times a Y minus one. Now, again, to make sure that we get an A, we have to simplify this. We could definitely factor out a Y from the numerator, but unfortunately nothing is going to be able to simplify out, but hopefully you have a better understanding and some more confidence understanding how to combine by adding or subtracting rational expressions. If you have a test coming up, I wish you the best of luck. Let me know down below how you do. If you need more examples on rational expressions, or you want to take a look at the notes and resources I have available for my students inside of my courses, go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below, or take a look at the next video I have created for you here. Cheers.